Ninth edition of the Joburg Ladies Open tees off in less than seven days time at the Modafontein Golf Club. Now the city of Johannesburg is gearing to host yet another world-class event which is close sanctioned by the Ladies Tour as well as the Ladies European Tour. Over 100 golfers will compete for the share of the six million prize purse. Joined in studio by Bongi Mokaba who is the Director of Events Management for the city of Johannesburg, also the Tournament Director and also in studio with us this morning is the 2021 La uh, Joburg Ladies Open champion Cassandra Alexander. Ladies, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you. Mambongi, let's start with you. Um, it's the ninth edition yes. of the Ladies Joburg Open. Talk to me about how the excitement levels are as you, the city of Joburg, gears up to uh, basically welcome some top golfers to South Africa. Rachel, it is quite exciting. And there's a couple of things that makes this year's tournament exciting. Mm. One is that it is um, year three that the tournament um, is being co-sanctioned with the Sunshine Ladies Tour mm. and the Ladies um, European Tour. But the second thing is that it's the ninth year. You know, when we started in 2016, um, I didn't think that we would be here. And it's exciting for me to say this year, as the country celebrates 30 years of democracy on the same month that we voted in 1994, yeah. um, we're hosting the ninth edition of the Joburg Ladies Open. Yeah. And for me, it doesn't get better than this. It doesn't get better than this. The ninth edition, though, and earlier you spoke about the co-sanctioning of this event mm. by the Ladies European Tour, as well as the Sunshine Ladies Tour. What does this co-sanctioning mean, um, Sis Bong, in terms of sort of elevating this competition, this tournament? Originally when we started, um, the tournament was a Sunshine Ladies Tour tournament only. So we had a few players that were registered um, with the Sunshine Tour participating, but the bulk of the field um, was professional golfers that are affiliated to the Sunshine Tour. Mm. We negotiated um, with the Sunshine Ladies Tour, the Ladies um, European Tour to say, at what point do we get the Joburg Ladies um, Open co-sanctioned, yeah. you know, um, and, and that happened in 2022. 20, um, what that means, it means um, we increase the prize money, the field gets better, yeah. the competition gets tough, yeah. um, in the sense that whoever participates needs to, you know, up their game. Yes. But also, it has given the city of Joburg further global exposure in the sense that we've had two um, girls, um, one from Sudan in 2022, Lynn Grant winning. Then we had um, Lily May Humphreys, who's defending this year mm -hmm. from, um, from England winning. Um, without being biased, but I think Kess, you guys need to pull the game. You guys need to pull the game. We're looking. We need yes. to retain the prize money home. Yeah. But I can't be biased like that, you know, because it has to be the best person winning. It is elevating the status of the tournament because mm. when these girls participate, for me, my job is in the office. Your job is in the studio. The golf course, Their yeah. job is on the golf course. Yeah. And, and that is what this means. So you have South Africa on the global map. Watch you know, it. where we're able to say, as soon as Kess and them participate in Europe, as soon as the previous winners are shown on TV, they always refer to them as top finishers of the Joburg Ladies Open, mm. or winners of the Joburg Open. And for me, that is how the brand of the city of Joburg and the tournament continues to be out there in the world. All right. The good thing is that we have a former champion, 2021 champion. The last time a South African won the Joburg Ladies Open was Cassandra um, Alexander. You won back in 2021 at the Soweto Country Club. I wonder, though, what memories do you have of that win? That tight tussle between yourself as well as Leanne Pace. What it, memories do you have of that? It, it was a big week and it was yeah. a big win. Um, it was firstly my first Sunshine Ladies Tour win. Mm. and technically my first professional win on a major tour so oh. it was definitely a big week and and like you said it wasn't just a runaway tournament it was a tight tassel between I think it was myself Leanne Pace and Megan Bing Paulson she's mm. uh, from Norway if I'm not mm. mistaken yeah. and it was like if I can name exactly where we were at it, it's <laughs> right right up there and it's it's in the memory so yeah it was a it was a great great week it was 
tough and those last five holes were were really a grind and I'm just glad to have walked away as a champion and hopefully I can do it again as a co-sanctioned event. Yeah. I'm part of the European Tour, the Ladies European Tour as well as the Sunshine Ladies Tour so I think it would be a pretty cool win for one of us, hopefully me, but one of us that are, are joint members yes. to, to win and I think that would be a great one and Bongs has told me there's a lot of people behind me, <laughs> backing yes. me, so I hope I can get away with that one. But yeah, 2021 will always hold a special place in my heart and the trophy's still there. Every day I walk into the house, I see it and remember those great memories. Oh, so you, you, get, you got to keep the trophy from 2021? Yes, yeah, so you get How a trophy, you know? like a main trophy, yeah. that's called a floater trophy if I'm yeah. not mistaken, and then they get like a replica kind of mm. one that you get to take home. Mm. So my name's on the, the, the big floater trophy but I got one at home just to remind me every day yeah oh that's great but how important do you think though uh, it is Cassandra for for South African to win this time around I mean it's been two years um, since your win 2021 and here we are again co-sanctioned it's a big tournament it attracts players from around the world yeah. how important is it for South African to essentially become victorious at the end of this tournament definitely as Bungie said as it went to a co-sanction obviously we had bigger players in the mm. field, there was more competition, it was tough, the golf course is set up tougher because we have regulations to, to follow with the Ladies European Tour, so yeah. obviously everything's a lot harder, but I think this year I'm hoping one of the South Africans come, can come home with it and keep it here, like Bongi said, we'd love to keep the money in South Africa and we'd love for one of the South Africans to win it, so I think it's, it's quite an important year. I think we've also got great players in the field, not just European good players, but yeah. South Africans too. I mean, the last three winners on the Sunshine Ladies Tour have been South Africans, so there's a great start. All those players are in the field, so I definitely think we have a better chance this year than what we have previously, but golf is a tough game. You can never predict what's going to happen, and like I say, I hope one of the South Africans come home victorious, and hopefully it's me, but yeah, I think it's really important that we, we as South Africans push for that, and I don't think Bongi would be any happier than if a South African won it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back to you. Um, let's talk about the Motorfontein Golf Course. Yes. Talk to us about this, with this golf course. What makes it world class? Sure. One, Motorfontein is one of the oldest um, golf courses in the country. Mm. It's a parkland course. Um, we have... The beauty of it is that it's not an easy course you need to, to be able to play a strategic game mm. for you to be able to conquer Motofontaine. I think of the 18 holes we've got, 13 holes surrounded with water, and water is part of the features that you find on a golf course. Yeah. So you need to be able to know where you hit for you to be able to get on the, to the green zone regulation. Patting becomes a key, because I always say, whether you are a professional or an amateur, Every part comes. Every mm. part for them, uh, for the professionals, every part is money. So the better you play, the better you win. It's yeah. a psychological game. Like Kess was saying when she won in 2021, it became a psychological game amongst the three of them to say who was mentally fit to mm. be able to take this. And that is how you play Modo Fonte. Mm. And, and when you also look at the fact that this tournament has sort of moved from different golf course to another, so it was Soweto at some point, Kensington at some point, and now we're back at Motofontein. Yes. Is there a reason why the, the, the venue of this Joburg Open Ladies continues to change? Why doesn't it have a, a home for itself? Um, Rachel, the city took a decision yeah. to say um, both tournaments, the Joburg Open and the Joburg Ladies Open, do not belong to, to one golf course. Mm. Johannesburg has a number of unbelievable golf courses and we should be able to um, showcase what Johannesburg as a city has. Mm. Some of them belong to the city, some of them are privately owned, um, but that is infrastructure. When tourists come, they are able to say, I'm playing in Johannesburg, I've played that golf course, that golf course and that golf course, together with amateurs as well. So we started at the Royal Johannesburg and Kensington in 2016 because by then the Joburg Open um, was hosted there. We moved the Joburg Open to um, Ren Park. Yeah. We moved the Joburg Ladies Open to Soweto. Soweto has a beautiful story. 
Um, I normally say to people, if you haven't played, so wait, you haven't played golf courses in the country. Because it, it is the one golf course with 18 holes that you can find in any township in the country. The greens are, 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 are amazing. It, yeah. it is located in the township. The history of Soweto, everybody understands it. And together with the Sunshine Tour and the city, um, that golf course was then upgraded. So we moved the Soweto country, um, we moved the Joburg ladies open there for three years. And it was unbelievable three years because the support from the community, you know, we contributed to the economy of Soweto by bringing this tournament. We, we had players coming from all over the world, um, South African players as well. Some of the players had never set foot in Soweto. So we're then able to expose that facility. Yeah. But because we we're co now co-sanctioning, we had limitations in terms of infrastructure in Soweto. We then had to move um, to, to, to Modofontaine. Okay, okay. Modofontaine has a driving range, and there's quite a number of other amenities mm -hmm. that were a requirement in terms of um, the standards set by the, the ladies' European tour. That's how we ended up in Modofontaine. So whether we're staying in Modofontaine or we're moving somewhere, that is the decision that the city of Joburg okay. needs to make going forward. All right. Cassandra, uh, you come into this one having won the APSA um, Invitational um, seven, six, seven days ago, right? Do you think that you're in form at the moment? Was your form currently go, coming into the Joburg Ladies Open? Yeah, I've definitely gained some confidence after the, the APSA Invitational. I played really well that week and... Yeah. Um, I've, I've had a tricky start to, to the year. I had ankle surgery in December, so I had to recover from that. Mm -hmm. I got a new golf coach in January, so there's a lot of change going on. So I knew I'd have to be patient in order to get to the form that I was looking for. And I think I'm there. Um, I've just got to keep doing a lot of work and maintaining where we're at. Um, we just finished now uh, at Glendale. We just finished playing yesterday. So mm -hmm. that wasn't my greatest week, but learn from our mistakes. And, and when you go through changes in golf, you... You play well, but some, sometimes when you don't get those moves right, it can cost you, and that's kind of what happened this week. So mm -hmm. back to the drawing board, back to getting into routine of doing my reps that I need to do in order to hit the ball mm -hmm. well. But I'd say coming to Joburg Open, I think I'm definitely in form. Um, I've played good. I've played bad. I know where the middle is, and I, I know what it takes to win at Joburg. Um, so I think I'm coming in form, and I'm excited for the week. Uh, apparently, Modifontaine looks unbelievable. And it as does. Bongi said, yes. it's, it's a really a tricky golf course. Coming from a golfer, you have to have a lot of golf knowledge going in there. It's, it's kind of sneaky difficult. It's on the side there in Greenstone, and it's not like crazy, crazy infrastructure there. So you think, oh, it's just like another parkland course. That course has some tricks up its sleeve. You don't have flat lies. Like Bobby said, there's water yeah. everywhere. Okay. So, yeah, it's great. Ladies, thank you so much for your time. All the best of luck for next week. And we'll definitely be keeping a close eye as to what is happening there at Modafontein. The ladies in studio just to speak to us about the Joburg Ladies Open team off officially next week, Thursday, concluding on Sunday at the Modafontein Golf Course.